We ask you, my Republican friends in Congress and states and cities and counties, to stand up for God's sake and help prevent this concerted effort to undermine our election and the sacred right to vote. Have you no shame? As we said, genuine passion from the president today. The Associated Press, however, pointing out, quote, despite his ringing words on Tuesday, he avoided any mention of trying to alter the Senate filibuster rule that stands in the path of federal legislation. For more, we are so happy to welcome back tonight Juanita Tolliver, veteran political strategist to progressive candidates and causes, and one Michael Steele, former chairman of the RNC, former lieutenant governor of the great state of Maryland, the host of the Michael Steele podcast. So, one. Anita, it is getting tough out there. Uh, my evidence, uh, uh, Exhibit 1, join me in listening to how our friend Nicole Wallace started her broadcast today. Tragically and perhaps ironically, based on how he clinched the Democratic nomination, President Joe Biden will now forever hold the distinction of having served as president during one of the greatest rollbacks of access to the polls in recent American history. So, Juanita, tough but fair. Uh, it gets worse. Here's Jeff Greenfield talking about the Democrats. They have a majority coalition. They control the White House. But the Democrats are trapped in delusions of rewriting the rules while the GOP figures out ways to bend them. And not to be outdone, Steve Schmidt today said uh, Chuck Schumer is not the leader these times demand. So how are Democrats going to deal with all these pressures, Juanita? Look, Brian, Democrats absolutely have to get it together, and the clock is ticking for them to do that. And I definitely appreciate all this commentary, especially from Nicole Wallace, because she hit the nail on the head by having historic turnout, especially from black and brown communities, and sealing the 2020 election, not only for Biden, but also for Democrats in the Senate. This is how they return the favor to those very voters who we know are being targeted by these voter suppression bills. And as I mentioned yesterday, it was going to be utterly disappointing if Biden didn't lay out any commitments to explicit action that he's going to take in terms of applying pressure to the Democratic Senate caucus to getting the For the People Act and the John Lewis Voting Rights Act across the finish line. And sadly, that is what happened today. Yes, he showed a lot of energy and enthusiasm and understanding the issues that are at stake with these voter suppression bills, not only for our elections, but also for our democracy writ large. But for all the rhetoric, that failure to lay out an action plan shows that he's not fully committed to doing this in a public way, um, in a transparent way. And I want to emphasize publicly because I'm still holding out all hope, Brian, that he and Vice President Harris are working behind the scenes just as hard as they worked on infrastructure to make sure that their caucus falls in line so that these two important pieces of legislation that Texas state legislators are calling for, that activists across the country are calling for, so that they get to his desk and become law. Because this barrage of voter suppression attacks from Republican-led state houses is not going to stop anytime soon. And Michael, that's saying a lot about your Republicans. There's no denying that this is now a uh, part of, if not their entire brand. Do they continue to go deep on voter suppression, having been called out? Everyone is watching now. Uh, question for you, Brian. Who's going to stop them? <laughs> there has been the, the Republican Party has not paid the price for anything. Look, even losing the presidency in 2020, Republicans look at that and go, well, that really wasn't about us. That was more about Trump. After all, we picked up 11, 12 seats in the House and we drew to a, a tie in the Senate. So where are the consequences? There have been no consequences for the rollback of, of rights and, and the reordering of constitutional norms and principles, of, of using the White House as a grift palace um, and, and using the RNC as an ATM. There, there, is no, there is no consequence for any of that. So to your question about what happens going forward on voting rights, what the hell are, who's going to stop them? The Democrats? Because the Democrats are pining over, over nuance and process and policy, as opposed to getting into the nitty gritty of politics. The problem the president, the vice, the president has is he's got no political cover. He can go out and give a heart moving expression 
of the, the national frustration uh, around voting rights and the desire to do something. But where's the stick? Who's going to help him levy the stick upside some Republican heads in the Senate, in the House, or anywhere else in the country they need to? That's what we did in 2010. We leveraged, we leveraged against our opponent. We, we turned their strength into a weakness. And here, you don't have that kind of thinking around the Democratic uh, organizers to give the president the political cover so he can go out, give the high-minded speech, the country applauds him. Meanwhile, someone's getting their knuckles cracked in the United States Senate. Uh, Mansion, cinema, to name a few. To our viewers, note the passion. This is the stuff of 1147 AM, not PM, and we're so appreciative <laughs> of these guests. Juanita, I can give you all of 60 seconds for this follow-up. And you touched on this, a, a glancing blow on this topic. The voters from black and brown communities that the Democrats are counting on, if all else fails, if there's no federal legislation, if lawsuits are in the federal courts for years to come, they're still going to count on the core voters to get to the polls no matter what and try to embarrass the Republicans at their own game. But Brian, the reality still remains. You cannot out-organize systematic voter suppression. It just doesn't work that way. And unless Biden fights as hard for these voting communities, these voting blocks, these black, Latino, API, indigenous communities, then we're going to be looking at him come 2022 and saying, what have you done for us? How did you solve this problem for us so that our voices were heard and our votes were counted? We can't thank our two guests enough tonight for bringing the passion and taking our questions, though Michael did ask his share during his answer. Juanita Tolliver, <laughs> Michael Steele, two good friends of this broadcast, will do.